Hi, welcome to Engineering Q Vectors, uh, class number three. In this video, we're going to talk about classical vector operators. Uh, there's four basic classic vector operators, addition, subtraction, the dot product, and the cross product. Familiarity with the, the classical cross and dot products will help you understand the next video where we begin the transition from classical to Q vectors. So let's go back. This is a repeat of what we've done before. This is classical vector addition, which doesn't change when we get to Q vectors, by the way. So we say that vector C is a summation of vector A plus B. And I've color coded this from the last time, where this is A, B, and the resultant C will be in blue. So basically what you do is you add the components of A plus the components of B, but the X for C is going to be the summation of the X components of A and B and the y component of C is going to be the summation of the y components of, of A and B. And I'm giving an example of uh, vector A equals 20x plus 15y and vector B equals minus 5x plus 10y. Um, we're going to go through that process here and this is basically this repeated only with numbers and we get C is equal to 15x plus 25y. And that's the same thing if you want to do it graphically. If you had vector A and you draw it out with a protractor on graph paper or whatever, and then you, at the tip of vector A, you then put down vector B, then where those, where the B ends up is going to be the summation of the two vectors, which would be vector C. Vector subtraction. Same as uh, last time. Uh, if we want to go backwards and we want to find A given C and we will subtract B from C to get back to A, again you take the components of C and you subtract the components of B. And then the X components of A are going to be the subtraction of the X components of CX minus BX. The Y components of A are going to be CY minus BY. And again if you put the numbers in then you can get back to A. I'm not going to go through all that. We went through that before. It's just simple um, addition and subtraction. The dot product. Dot product many you probably have never heard of before. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first show you what the, how to compute the dot product and then I'm going to show you what the dot product is. So bear with me if you don't understand why we're doing this we're going to explain why in a moment. Uh, for the dot product you basically multiply down so that the dot product represented this is an oversized circle but it's usually a dot, a little bit less than that, but not quite a point. Or, you know, it's somewhere in between. Uh, the dot product of A and B is AX, BX plus AY, BY. And you sum these together, it results in a scalar, meaning a non-vector quantity. And to give you an example, given uh, A equals 20X plus 15Y and B equals 15X plus 25Y, you basically take 20 times 15 plus 15 times 25, you sum that together and you find that the dot product of A and B is 675. Well, well, well what does that mean? I mean, what, what big deal? I mean, what does that mean? Well, turns out it has an interesting meaning. It works out to that if you took the magnitude of vector A and the magnitude of vector B and you took the cosine of the angle between A and B that would be the result. And what it ends up being is a measure of parallelism. Okay, So if A and B are perpendicular the result comes out to zero. If A and B are completely parallel you get the maximum value which is the magnitude of A times B. And if they're going in opposite directions, then you get the maximum value, but the result is negative. Okay, so if you get a negative number, that means your, your vectors are going in opposite directions. It could even be like this, too. So where do we use something like this? Well, in, vector gra in uh, computer graphics, we typically divide uh, objects up into tiny little geometric forms, like these little parallelograms here and then we draw little normals to the face of each one of those parallelograms okay and that little normal based on its direction relative to the oncoming light ray will tell how much shading or lightness or darkness to color that particular little plate 
So if the plate normal and the incident ray are coming in exactly head on, which means the negative the result would be negative in maximum value, that means you paint it the brightest color, you know, white. If your object is white, you paint it with the brightest color of white. On the other hand, if your normal is a little bit off center, then it's going to be a darker shade. When it becomes perpendicular, it's going to go dark, but it may have a little bit of what do you call uh, diffuse light hanging around, so it might not be perfectly black. On the other hand, if the ray of light is coming from the rear, which means your, vector, your dot product is positive, that means the light ray striking the back end of the surface, which means that you would basically paint the face completely black because it's completely in shadow. Depends on all your other lighting factors, but that would be the, the incident lighting uh, factor. Now let's talk about the cross product. Cross product, as the name sounds, you take the cross. You cro multiply AX times BY, and you multiply AY times BX. Now there's a minus sign here. Because if we look at the right hand rule, X, Y, Z, well AX, BY would be positive Z. Okay, but AY, which would be over here, swung around to X would be negative Z. So that's where the minus sign comes from. It's due to the right-hand rule. And so what you have here, unlike the dot product, you don't have a scalar. You now have a vector that's normal to A and B. In this case, because these vectors are in the XY plane, that normal ends up being in the Z plane. Okay, given the example here, again, 20X times 25Y minus 15x times, uh, I'm sorry, 15y times 15x. Uh, that gives you a z, and that works out. Writing the full vector, you get 0 for x and y, but you get 275 for z. Now, the interesting thing is that normal, this produces a normal. The way you find out where that normal is going to be is if you put your hand in the direction, if you have a cross b, you put your hand in the direction of a, you swing it to b and that means the normal is coming up out of the page between those two vectors. But if you do B cross A, go the other way, that means B cross A, the normal would be going down into the page. All about the, unless you're using the left hand rule, then everything is reversed. The meaning to the cross product is, a cross product gives you a normal to two vectors. Again, you take A cross B and you get your normal Z, which would be 275 in this case. Um, and the way you show that in another meaning is if you take the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B, take the sign between the two angle, um, that would be the magnitude of the normal that you get. So therefore, if your two vectors are perfectly perpendicular, your normal is going to be the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B normal to the two vectors. If your two vectors are perfectly parallel, you get zero. If they're this way, you get zero. Okay, but if they're normal, you get maximum value. And again, uh, if you do A cross B, you get one value. If you do, that becomes the opposite of B cross A. That's a little identity. Identity is kind of like a known property of a particular math thing. So how do we use the cross product? Again, in computer graphics, if you want to know the normal to these little squares so you can compute your dot product to see how dark or light you're going to shade it, if you take your one of the sides and cross it with the other side, you're going to get the normal to the vector. Well, in this case, I, this would be the, the red arrow across the green arrow would give you that. If you do green cross red, you get the negative, just like I showed you before, where A cross B is one thing, but it's the opposite of B cross A. So it depends on which one you define as A and which one you define as B. That would be to tell you which, what the surface is. So if you define this as A and this as B, then your normal would be in the direction toward the light. So you've got to be careful about which one you decide is going to be A and which one you're going to be decide as B, because you could have your figure drawn inside out. So recap. We reviewed the basic vector operations available prior to Q vectors. Okay, there, there are two vector products, but there's no vector division. This anomaly led to the development of Q vectors, which is the topic of the next, vector, next video. Now, there are more complex operators available to us, like the curl and the gradient and all that stuff, 
Um, these are improved with Q vectors and they're the topic of later uh, Q vector videos. Thank you.